Minecraft 1.21, the long-awaited update with all of its amazing stuff which I've laid out right here that we're going to take a look at today, right here, right now. Some of these things may even affect your everyday Minecraft life. Minecraft 1.21 is adding a host of all kinds of new blocks, items, and mobs. So in this video, I'm going to cover every single confirmed thing that's going to be added to Minecraft 1.21. Some of the biggest things in this update are going to be at the end of the video, including something I think is going to change Minecraft combat as we know it. So make sure to stick around till then. Starting things off with the new mobs right here in these little cages I've built. The first one being the Bogged. I am very excited about this mob. This is a very interesting mob and a very cool new addition. There are already, of course, multiple different versions of the zombie, and so it seems only fitting that they have finally gone ahead and added another variant of the skeleton. But but now then, what's so special about this one? Well, as you can see, it is all covered in all the little slimy bits and things, and even has some little cute mushrooms on his head. In fact, see him easier, we'll just bring him on out here, although he will start burning. But as you can see, we got the mushrooms on the head, and he's super cool looking. But anyway though, what's, so what's going to happen if we go into survival mode with this guy right here? Well, first of all, the blaze is going to try to attack me, but as you can see, I get poison arrows. This thing shoots poison arrows, as you can see, I'm going to switch back before I die. But this thing shoots poison arrows, which is pretty deadly, and after being killed, as I will now, it will sometimes drop even poison arrows when it dies, although I got unlucky that time. So our friend the bog here will be spawning inside of mangrove swamps and standard swamps, both in the watery spots in those places. Which will now make them quite a bit more deadly because, to be honest, you know, slimes, slimes are not, not very deadly in the slightest. But then moving over to the second mob that's being added in this update, if I go ahead and spawn one out right here and switch into survival mode, as you can see, they kind of they kind of swoop around. They kind of swoop around and then as you can see there, they start they start blasting you. They start blasting with wind charges and they will knock you far back and even do some significant damage. And that these wind charge thingies that they use, well these things are are similar to another thing that we'll be looking at later on today, which is the wind charge item. Now as you can see when they die, they will be dropping some of these breeze rods right here, which is also dependent on the amount of looting you have on your sword. You will get more if you have looting. But but now then, what are these breeze rods good for? Well, if we just place a crafting table here and plonk them in, as you can see, we get us some of these beautiful wind charges. Wind charges are a new item being added, and as you can see, throwing one will launch you up into the air and does a similar thing to the actual breeze's attack. So as you can see, if we have an innocent little sheep here and start throwing it, as you can see, the sheep will be damaged and knocked back significantly. And while it doesn't do significant damage on its own, these things will eventually take them out, as well as, of course, significantly knocking mobs and players back. Another interesting thing about wind charges, which I will go ahead and test out on these copper doors, which we haven't actually gotten to yet, is when you throw them, they will interact with things like doors, as well as acting as standard projectiles, knocking items out of item frames, which that was a potion, which I'm going to have to now go and replace. They also will interact with redstone components, so if I just place a couple of lamps around here and then start blowing at them like this, then as you can see, it does interact with buttons and such as well. But where will these guys spawn? Well, they will be spawning inside of the trial chambers, which we will get to later, along with all the blocks that come with the trial chambers. But before we move on to that, I think we will slide over to some beautiful new copper blocks, which are being added in my 1.21. As you can see, this is all of the new ones right here. I may have made a slight miscalculation with this because these are actually starting to oxidize actually by themselves. But as you can see, we have this new chiseled copper block, which comes in every variant, along with the copper grate, which also comes in every variant. These can be waterlogged, which creates a pretty cool look. And then over here we have the copper bulb right here, which is also in every variant. And the interesting thing, we will take these copper bulbs a little bit more of a close look here. But these copper bulbs actually act as automatic T flip flops. So as you can see here, as I it turns on, and then when I click it again, it turns off. Which means it's an automatic, completely usable T flip flop without any redstone circuitry at all. And if you hook up a comparator to it like that, as you can see, you get a comparator output when it's on and not when it's off. The interesting thing about these copper bulbs is that the more oxidized they are, then the less light they have. So if I set the time to night, as you can see, not very much light, but as I start to scrape off the layers, as you can see, it starts to light up like that. And as you can see, we also got one of the new advancements, which I will look at later. And then, of course, we also have all the new copper doors and trap doors, just like these. These are basically like iron doors and trap doors, except they can be opened by hand. And of course, they also come in every single of the oxidized states as well, which I think is super cool. 
Same thing goes for these trapdoors here. Nothing special, standard trapdoors, but they are metal and they do not have to have redstone to open. And if we just simply spin around, we will see all the new tough blocks as well. So far, the only tough blocks that there are is this one, one, one single tough block. But now, with 1.21, as you can see, there are going to be added a bunch of new ones. There's tough bricks, there is chisel tough bricks, chisel tough, and polished tough, and all of the slab, stair, and wall variants of each of those, with a total of 13 new tough blocks being added to the game. And then, of course, the final block that there is being added, besides these ones which we'll get to in a minute, is, of course, the crafter, which is probably the most game-changing and useful block out of all of these. As you probably know by now, what you can do, of course, is either put things into this with a hopper or else put them in manually, and then a single redstone output will actually... Now, as you probably know with this thing, if you either manually put in items or put them in with a hopper system, then input a redstone signal, then as you can see it automatically crafts it, and of course vice versa depending on what kind of thing you have there. This can be set up with cool redstone machines to actually craft any item in the game, as well as of course you can disable slots inside to actually get the exact correct recipe that you need. And now onto the new customization items that already existed but have now been added to, such as the armor trims. Over here we have the flow armor trim, which has this pattern with diamond on netherite, and over here we have the bolt armor trim, which is this pattern on netherite. I think both of these look very cool and are a bit busier and more like complicated than the ones that we've already had and I think that's a very good thing. Always love to get new ones. Both of these can be found in vaults in trial chambers which we'll get onto in a minute and this one can be duplicated using a breeze rod and this one with a block of copper. The next thing here is some new pottery sherds that have been added and as you can see there are three different ones. Uh, the back is blank here there are three so this is the flow, this one is guster, and the one on this side is scrape. And as you can see, they just add to the large collection of them, and I think that's a very cool thing to have. And the last two things that are being added in terms of new customization options are the flow and the guster banner patterns. And this is what they look like as blue against white. Now before we get on to the trial chambers, I would like to show off these different potions up here, which are all new. Four different potions are being added, and I do have a couple of things to say about these. First up, we have the potion of wind charging right here. Now as you might guess, wind charging is brewed using a breeze rod. So so if we maybe just give this a little bit of a test on a different mob here, as you can see I can throw it at that right there, I also got it myself, but now if I go ahead and kill this pig right here, then as you can see, it gives a little bit of a wind boost when it dies. So if I were to affect a bunch right here and see what happens, and start taking these guys out, then as you can see they start boosting wind, which would of course potentially be useful by sort of knocking enemies away after their death. This is interesting, although kind of a strange one, although just wait because I have more to say about the others, which also ties into this. And it looks like you're still wind boosted, ha. Huh. Next up is a potion of oozing, which is brewed using a slime block. So if we maybe take one of these oozing potions and throw it at a pig, well, maybe you wouldn't guess what this one actually does, and it is interesting. If we run over here and kill this pig now, as you can see it's leaving some slimy bits after it, but if we go ahead and kill this pig, as you can see, two medium-sized slimes appear on death. So that is interesting, although to be honest, it is rather odd of an effect to add to Minecraft. But it could certainly be useful in slime farming. Next up, we have the Potion of Weaving, which is brewed using a cobweb. So if we maybe take our little guinea pig back again here and throw some weaving at it, and then go ahead and kill this pig, as you can see when it dies, it spawns a couple of cobwebs around it as such. This is interesting because it does of course make a trap for any enemies that you or any mob may have left behind. This also makes this the only renewable source of cobwebs that is currently in the game. Last up we have the Potion of Infestation which is brewed with, get this, a block of stone. Yes, a potion in Vanilla Minecraft is now going to be brewed with a single block of stone. Which struck me as odd, but the effect might strike you as even odder. If we throw it at a pig here, as you can see, nothing happens. But actually, every time the pig is hurt, there's a 10% chance, as you can see there, of spawning 1 to 3 silverfish. So if we keep punching this pig, we should get some more of them out of here eventually. We got one, we got lucky on the first trial, although there's only a 10%, but there we go, we got a silverfish. So this, of course, could be a good defense mechanism, or it could just be plain annoying. The fact that it's brewed with only a single piece of stone is slightly odd, but it is interesting. And I'm assuming that if I do go to survival mode, we'll take some damage. Okay, well, well, there's that too. I was kind of expecting for some silverfish to spawn. So those are the four. And now my thoughts on these are that these are interesting and beneficial in the end additions to the game. Although I do think that they are slightly lazy. I mean, come on, you're gonna make it so that slimes just spawn when somebody dies. 
and you just brew with a slime block, or the same thing with the cobwebs, even the wind charge and the infestation one. They feel like slightly lazy attempts to just add new potions for the sake of adding new potions. I don't dislike them, I just think that they're kind of strange, and I would never have thought of putting that into an actual Minecraft update. Now, there is one more sort of potion which we haven't covered yet, and that is the ominous bottle. The raid mechanics are slightly changing in this one. So if we just come on over here to a pillager outpost and wait for a captain to spawn, here's one right here. Then as you can see, if I take this guy out right here, then we do not get the effect anymore. As you can see, it has now dropped this thing right here, which is called the ominous bottle. And if we go ahead and slurp this thing down, then as you can see there, it gives us the bad omen effect in a similar way, but now you have to drink the bottle instead of just simply killing the captain. There are different levels of the ominous bottle, ranging from level 1 all the way up to level 5, which of course gives you the corresponding level of bad omen. The icon has also changed, as you can see here. Now if we were to head over here to a plains village, which you can't see because it's now dark, but if I just bust out of from under the ground here, as you can see it has now been replaced with the raid omen effect, which triggers a raid to spawn just as it would normally. This does have some slight implications for raid farms, although I don't think it's actually going to significantly change the way that they work. There's another reason for these bad omen bottles to now be in bottled form, because there is another event that can now be triggered, but to show you that, I must now go to a new structure. Locate structure, trial chambers, and off we go. So we just switch ourselves over into spectator mode and dive below the waves like this, as you can see, a new structure, a very large and very massive structure is opening up underground. As you can see, we got one more of the eight advancements which exist in this new version. But as you can see, this place is a labyrinth of all types of new copper blocks, along with plenty of other stuff for us to look at. So, it turns out I accidentally kind of corrupted the other world and there were no mobs set inside, but if we're in a new world here now, as you can see, these babies right here are the trial spawners. Now, as you can see, this one is a breeze trial spawner. Now, if we are in survival mode and we go into this thing here, then as you can see, as we get close, it'll start to play this cool little animation and mobs proportional to the number of players spawning here things. The more players there are, the more mobs that will appear. It is a dynamic system. And in this labyrinth of area, then it is pretty difficult to survive. And this one, as you see here, that's a zombie one. And there are quite a few mobs, which I will, and I will explain further in a second. But as you can see here, we've got several zombie ones. There's also things like little arrow shooter trap thingies and stuff like that. Anyway, if I just, okay, so I've died there. Let me go ahead and uh, get into a more controlled environment so I can test this out. But if now maybe in creative mode I wander around this place, as you can see some of them here have skeletons which will spawn holding poison arrows, they will shoot those at you. As you can see there's another block here which is the trial vault and you can see the possible loot items spinning around on the inside and the little keyhole mouth thingy opens up once you get close enough like this. To unlock those things you're going to need a trial key. Now how do you get one of those? Well, let's go ahead and get decked out and give this a little test so I can show you. So, if I just give this a little test by switching over to survival mode, then we'll see this little thing play again, but this time I'm more prepared to take these beasties on now. So let's go ahead and see what happens if I go ahead and defeat all the mobs from this spawner. So as you can see, quite a few of them spawn, and as I was saying, then more will spawn depending on how many players you have, making it a dynamic difficulty adjusting thing based on who is with you. But now it appears I've defeated them, and as you can see, it will pop out a key, and if we pick up that key, then we can take this key, run on down here and go ahead and unlock this thing right here which is a very cool animation it'll start to spit stuff out of the top I'm about to be attacked by breezes but as you can see there it spit a bunch of stuff out of the top and gave me some different various and cool items such as iron and emeralds as well as other things which I think the breeze may have yet blown away there's some honey bottles an ominous bottle which gives me it was an ominous two bottle there are some more rare items that you can get from these things but the loot isn't super super great but one way to increase what you get is by actually having the bad omen effect when you enter one of these places now if in here in survival mode we were going to go ahead and swig down this ominous bottle well hopefully without that happening but as you can see even though there's all kinds of stuff happening we now have the trial omen effect and that is because we have unlocked the trial omen event which spawns a lot more mobs but also gives you a lot more good stuff so let's go ahead and see if we can defeat this thing without tying ourselves. As you can see, we got more heavily armored beasts here, even with the new armor trims and such on, which is very cool. There's now, of course, the little soul flames inside of the spawners, which show you that they are the trial, the, the trial omen spawner thingies, which I can't really talk right now, so let's go ahead and see what we can do with this. But as you can see there, I've gone ahead and defeated it. <laughs> Hopefully close enough to being defeated. Oh no, where's my key? I think a breeze blew my key away. I'm going to have to find it in just a second. But if I can find my key that that breeze blew away so rudely as I was about to pick it up. Now one interesting thing about these vaults here is you can't open them up if you already have. If you've already gotten stuff out of them, you can never do it again. That means we're going to have to take this key and go hopefully find another vault to open up with it. 
Now the slight difference between ominous vaults and ominous spawners is that ominous spawners will replace normal spawners, whereas ominous vaults actually have to be found specifically. So for instance, here's one right here. So if I go ahead and take my ominous trial key, stuff it inside the slot right there, then, as you can see, it will pop out quite a variety of items, which are significantly better than the normal. So let's just see what we scored from this drop. Looks like we got a very nice axe, a few emeralds, and a flow armor trim. Nice haul. As you can see, though, the trial chambers are an amazing labyrinth of things, built mostly out of new blocks. As you can see, tough blocks and copper blocks, mostly built out of the new stuff that's being added. But there are things like clay pots that generate throughout the place, which do actually have a few items inside, such as amethysts and arrows and stuff. There's a few barrels, although the barrels have absolutely garbage loot inside of them. There are a variety of different types of structures throughout here, such as places filled with water, places with beds in it like this, and all kinds of very interesting things to explore. There are a few chests as well dotted throughout. They don't have very good loot inside of them, but as you can see, they do have some strength potions and such, as well as a few enchanted books here and there, like I got lucky with a sharpness 5. So, grabbing some of these things could very much help you in your fight. And so my thoughts on the Trial Chambers is that these are a very, very cool addition to Minecraft. Although, I must say that if we take a look out here, then as you can see, the underground of Minecraft is getting increasingly more and more complex and filled with all kinds of stuff. Whereas some things, like the end, continue to be neglected. So I think the energy put into making these could have been better directed into putting them into the end even, putting the exact same structure or similar structure into the end, or making completely new stuff for the end, because the end is a bit lacking. I'm just thinking that putting so many structures and caves underground is slightly getting maybe a little overwhelming. Overall though, I absolutely love the trial chambers, and they are now one of my favorite underground structures. But we still have one more thing to look at, and one of the best and most exciting things in this update. And that is the mace, a newly announced new weapon coming to Minecraft. And this isn't any kind of standard weapon like your sword or pickaxe, you can't craft it out of all the standard materials. Instead, it can only be crafted by using a heavy core and a breeze rod. Now, the mace is a very, very special weapon, and I will show off its unique power right now. Basically, if we were to go over here and maybe just summon in an iron golem, then as you can see, you know, it, it has a lot of health. It would take a lot of hits to take out. But it turns out that the damage is proportional to how far you fall. So, you can do stuff like take out anything in one shot. I did not do that, of course, there. That was two shots. Is it possible for me to one- let's see, I know I can one-shot it, but I have to be able to be accurate. Yep, look at that. I just one-shot it in Iron Golem. Iron Golems have 50 hearts. It also makes an absolutely insane-looking little blast, like when you hit the ground with it. Like when you go like this. Boom, I mean look at that, it feels really cool to use. And as overpowered as it seems, yes, it is true that you can now one-shot anything in Minecraft. Now you might wonder, well how is that any good if you're gonna die of fall damage? Well, that's also not true, because if I can <laughs> kind of be accurate enough here by going up into the sky, and then maybe just simply switching over to some survival mode, if I can be accurate, can I do it? Yes, as you can see, it resets your fall damage when you land on it. But, the maze doesn't just stop there. There's also a variety of enchantments, new ones, that you can add to it, which annoyingly could not all quite fit on my board. I had to put one extra over here. There are three new enchantments, which are all for the mace, and that is the Breach enchantment, Density, and Windburst. And those levels you see there are all max levels, so you can get up to five on Density, four on Breach, and three on Windburst. As it turns out, though, the mace is also compatible with all other standard sword enchantments, except Sweeping Edge. So if I go ahead over here and grab my maxed out mace from the back of the board, then as you can see, we have a pretty insane set here, including fire aspect, looting, and breaking and mending, along with all the new enchantments. Unfortunately, this did cost me 100 levels just to add the last enchantment to, so I'm pretty sure that this is impossible in survival mode. But, as we can see, it is compatible with things like smite and sharpness, along with all the new enchantments, which makes this thing an absolute beast of a weapon. Now, as we can see, if we just spawn us a little bit of a warden here, you do have to fly pretty high up, because these things are absolutely ripped with health, but if we go ahead down here and... Boom, and now you can already see, there we go, I two-shotted it, but you might have noticed something interesting happening when I actually hit with that. Let me maybe show it again. If we just take this innocent pig, for instance, and I hit it, as you can see, I got blasted up into the air. Well, that's the first of the enchantments, and that is Windburst. Now, if we look at it here, we have Windburst 3, and basically, the Windburst thing basically bursts you up into the air with wind, which is kind of what it says. But as means of demonstration, if I were to put them into a hole right here, like this, then go ahead and hit them where they can't fly away. Then basically I can do this, and as you can see, you can keep on comboing more and more mobs using this windburst. 
by jumping, hitting, and being blasted into the air, hitting again and again, and basically going in a loop like that. Because with Wind Burst, then you can obviously jump into the air afterwards and then hit again, as you just saw on the Warden previously. Now, there's two other new ones, of course, and that was Wind Burst, but now we also have Density and Breach. Breach makes it so that you can take out mobs with armor faster, so it will basically, every level of Breach decreases the effectiveness of the enemy's armor. And then Density is essentially another form of sharpness, but for a mace, it just makes it deal more damage. I will link the wiki page to this below, and there is a little calculator which will tell you how much damage something will take if you fall from a certain height with it. But it is, it's just really fun to use. And before you all go out there and start hunting for one of these mace things, then I'm sorry, but they will be very, very rare. The only way to get the heavy core is through those trial vaults which I showed you, and unfortunately the chance of getting one is extremely low. And you will have to fight a lot of mobs and open a lot of vaults before you'll be able to get a heavy core. But my friends, to the best of my knowledge, that is all of the content that is being added in Minecraft 1.21, and I think that for the most part, this is a very good update. If I were to rate it 1 out of 10, I would say I would give this an 8 out of 10 update thing. I think there are some odd quirks, such as those potions, as well as some things that I feel like could have been redirected elsewhere. But an 8 out of 10 is still a very solid and good score. But anyway, tell me your rating of this down in the comments, and also tell me if I missed anything. But either way, I will see you next time, and thanks for watching.